And they said, why do you want to go back to Iraq? I said, I'm not done killing Muslims. Well, um, Two tours Turkish in Somalia, Somalia, Bosnia, uh, Afghanistan, and Iraq. Yeah, right? yeah. You know, I wouldn't have been called a terrorist, which is what I would have been. Yeah. Because I'm white. Because I don't have religious affiliation as far as Islam. Now, if I would have been a Muslim and did something like that to a supermarket. We know how that goes. That yeah. Story, that story is easily predictable. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so, but she goes, what do you mean? I said, they're all Muslim. Like it didn't matter. They're the other. Yeah, they're the other. Because she knows I hate Muslims. Yeah. I'm reading the Quran. What is going on? And, right. She, the famous saying that's usually always said by a bigot is that I don't want my family around those people. Yeah. I would be and considered a criminal. I knew that. But I saw it as doing one last thing for my country. And I knew I would end up in federal prison. I knew I would end up with a needle in my arm. I knew that. And that's the way I felt. If I got rid of this hatred, I would die because it's the only thing keeping me alive. Yeah. So literally yeah. this and, was, yeah. and I was like, bam, I want to see what they guys say about this. So then they explained it. And it was a, a, an historical passage that was presented. I decided without telling anybody, I'm going to go visit these people. Mm. I'm going to give them a chance to prove me wrong. God. I mean, I was raised with uh, Christian values, I yeah. guess you'd say. My, 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 my mom was fairly religious in, in, in Christianity. So you would have been at that point in my life, at least, America was my religion. Eight weeks later, from the first day I stepped foot in that, in that Islamic center, I took my Shahada. This is the day, the day. This is the Dean's Hello, Michael. Welcome to the Dean Show. And we got an exciting episode, as always. I don't think, just looking at your resume, that we could have found someone who was more American. I mean, we, we're still, I'm American, right? Background Bosnian. Uh, you were in Desert Storm, Desert Shield. You were deployed all over the place. You spent uh, Marine Corps, Hua, <laughs> Hua. You serving your country. American is American pie? American Pie, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess that'd be it. On yeah. the show, Richard McKinney. Thank you. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm great. Did I'm I hit great. that right? Desert lot. Storm, Desert Shield. You were uh, like well, just... Desert Shield, then Desert Storm. It actually started in Panama in 89. Yeah. Uh, Panama, uh, uh, Just Cause. Yeah. Shield, Storm, two tours in Somalia, Bosnia, uh, Afghanistan, and Iraq. Yeah. So that's. I mean, that's. it was like country and loyalty and patriotism at the max. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, America, at that point in my life, at least, America was my religion. It uh -huh. was everything to me. It meant everything. Yeah. And we say God bless America because you want the best. May God guide America. May all Americans, may God Almighty bestow his mercy on all human beings. And, and this is uh, something that's so important because we're mentioning this. But some people attribute this loyalty to hating another group of people. So you went above and beyond and now it wasn't channeled in the right direction. You're like, let me be a little bit more loyal and I'm going to go blow up some Muslims. <laughs> well, yeah. Um to be honest with you, see, I was wounded in Iraq. Yeah. And wounded, uh, wounded in Iraq. Wounded in so Iraq. You got even. So now you got even worse scars. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so when that happened, they decided to medically retire me. Mm -hmm. um, but I wasn't done. They came to visit me in a hospital, and they ta started talking about retirement and all these benefits and this, that, and the other. I said, No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm going back to Iraq. And they, they looked at me kind of weird, you know. And they said, why do you want to go back to Iraq? I said, I'm not done killing Muslims. American Sniper? No. Is that you? No, that was You're not me. No, gosh, no. That's not you, no. American Sniper, on the no. Dean Show now? I don't have patience got, to be a sniper. Okay. <laughs> so you heard of American Sniper, Yeah, absolutely. Right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So say that again. So you're like, I want to go back. Because I'm not done killing Muslims. Wow. Yeah. Um, even in Bosnia, uh, I remember... We were there and we got called in for an operation to do some security. They had a, like a international CSI team, basically. Uh, they had gotten information, located a mass grave. 200 plus maybe, I don't know, some odd bodies, men, women, children. Some clothes, some not. And but at that point they were all skeletons. And they were going through doing their, you know, criminal findings, whatever it is they do, okay? And, I remember being the leader of that team. I was in the center. All my boys were out 
doing security, and I was in the center by the Humvee, and uh, a lady come up to me, and she goes, isn't it just terrible what human beings do to each other sometimes? And I says, I had a cigarette, and I just took a puff, and I said, not really. She goes, what do you mean? I said, they're all Muslim. Like, it didn't matter. They're the other. Yeah, they're the other. So, even though we were there, more or less, at, to, to, to keep the peace, uh, to make sure that um, the war didn't start up again, that Muslims weren't being persecuted and killed and, you know, every, all that. Um, you know, I did what the, at that point I was in the Army, and I, I just did what they told me to do. You yeah. know, I didn't have to like it. So, um, it, you know, it was just this, th this hatred started to, to infest me um, and build. And I've actually compared it to an organ in our body. Yeah. We don't ever want to lose an organ. It will die, mm -hmm. right? And that's the way I felt. If I got rid of this hatred, I would die because it's the only thing keeping me alive. So literally, this was fueling you, your life, you felt, your heart was mm -hmm. hate. Hate. So you could be fueling it with love and understanding and you know other beautiful things, but you were fueling it with something so toxic, hate, and it was just keeping you, like you said, alive. Alive. Yeah. Wow. So so you're in the wait. So you're in the Marines or Army? Well, I I, I, I joined the Marine Corps, retired from the Army. I still claim the Marine Corps because uh -huh. you know they're they're the Marines. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll always be a Marine. Uh, but after my second tour in Somalia, I decided that it was time for me to make a break and try yeah. to be a civilian. And uh, at 25, I had no idea what I was going to do with my life. I didn't graduate high school. I got a GED when I was stationed in Japan. Um, the reason I didn't graduate high school is I was, a, I was a teenage runaway. I was involved in drugs. I, I got expelled from my last high school simply because I was selling drugs. So because of all that, I just the, the military is my life, but now I had to put that on the back burner because it was starting to affect me emotionally. And when I got out, I tried to get work, but I didn't have any skills. So I decided I'm gonna go into the army, and that was it. Uh, does does the, does the envi environment there fuel this kind of hate? Did you feel did this condition you? Like where did this come from? Was it the environment of being in the military before the military? Did you have this hatred towards Muslims? Oh no! Even why? Even even after nine eleven, I didn't have a hatred towards Muslims. It's just something, and it's something that happened. And I think when it really took off was when they told me, "You're done. You've got to get out. You're done." So I got out. That was because of your injury? Injury, you got, yeah. What, what, you got shot? Uh, I was blown up. Blown up. Well, that's what I tell people. I don't really know. I, I don't remember any of it. I was on the second floor of a building in Ramadi in 06. And I was looking out on the street to the security teams and to make sure there wasn't anything going out because we was going to leave this building. I yeah. didn't want to walk my guys into a firefight. So it's the last thing I remember. Woke up in the hospital. The guys who came to visit me in the hospital says, dang, Sarge, only thing missing from you was a cape because you flew straight across the street. I, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Messed my back up, broke my shoulder. Um, you know. You got blown up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you were I had flying. some scar on my leg. As soon as you're flying, you're, blo it. you're yeah. blowing. Blowing, blowing up. somewhere, yeah. But thank God you're still here, yeah, you know. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Wow. Alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Uh -huh. Uh, we we got to get you on. We got to get him on the Joe Rogan show uh, and 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 hook up with. Uh, they got the David Giggins and the uh, Jocko. What's the other guy? Jocko? Willick, yeah. Jocko who? Willick. Willick. We got hook. You heard of Jocko Willick? David Giggins. These are all military men, and they're doing some good. They got some ins inspirational, uh, motivational material that's out there. But you're at another level, man. Yeah. This is another level because you're really, you know, now with your story, and we're get we're getting more deep into it as more of a positive message because you can actually with this message help change hearts and minds and prevent people from going to a whole nother level thinking they're taking their patriotism to that level that you thought because you were actually almost uh at the mosque with a ied mm -hmm. that's a bomb mm -hmm. and ready to uh, kill 200 300 plus i mean juma can be like uh, i don't know how much they hold at that mosque well, but you can have hundreds yeah. of people it depends if uh, innocent men women and children in or not if, it, if school's in and yeah it we have to pray out in the hallway sometimes. Yeah. So you were one of those guys that were now plotting. Some have actually done it. Uh, you were actually on your way to do it. Mm -hmm. What's going through your mind, man? Well, it was 
this is like i'm sorry yeah, this is no. like man this is like some yeah. like you can't make this stuff up stuff like i have one of those guys right next to me you know that was plotting there's some out there right now that hopefully they're tuning in and we can get them to unplot and have them do what you did to to actually rewire some of these circuits and and, and awake awaken your heart you know inshallah yeah. inshallah. inshallah god willing uh um uh, so it, what had happened was I didn't have any more wars. My wars are done now. I, I know that I'm I'm done. So wow. so what, what I did, I guess because I'm I'm asked, where does hatred come from? What 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 was it that made you go to this extent? And as I thought about it, I created a war for myself. Common enemy, Islam, Muslims, right? Nobody in America likes them, or you know, in in what in the media is telling you, right? right? You're right. getting programmed now, right? Right, and. Uh, uh, so that's when I started this plan and I knew, I knew that by law I would be considered a criminal. I knew that, but I saw it as doing one last thing for my country. And I knew I would end up in federal prison. I knew I would end up with a needle in my arm. I knew that I was okay with that. I was okay with that because it didn't matter because See, the whole thing, what really upset me in the military, I wanted to die. I wanted to die because here in America, if you're a soldier, if you're a Marine, whatever, and you go to combat and you die, you come back in a flag draped coffin, you are forever known as a hero. No matter what you did in your past, all your sins are washed away in society's eyes. And that's what I was shooting for. Mm -hmm. And it never happened. Was it connected? So it wasn't connected to God. It was just country. What were country. you religious? Did, were, did you believe in God? I mean, I was raised with uh, Christian values. I yeah. guess you'd say my, my 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 mom was fairly religious in in, in Christianity. So you would have been linked back to Chris, being a Christian. Yeah. Uh huh. I, probably. Probably. Yeah. I mean, the headlines probably would have said something like. Uh, uh, veteran suffering from PTSD, you know, has a breakdown or something like that, yeah. right? You know, I wouldn't have been called a terrorist, which is what I would have been. Yeah. Because I'm white. Because I don't have religious affiliation as far as Islam. Now, if I would have been a Muslim and did something like that to a supermarket, we know how that goes. That yeah. story, that story is easily predictable. Oh yeah. So yeah. so but but I but I just been known as a, you know, poor veteran that had emotional issues from the war that yeah. had been it so and that's and that and and that was what led me to to create this plan and it, and i had been planning it for over well over a year almost two years and piecing everything together i wasn't in a hurry patience because i didn't want to raise any alarms that would hap that would uh cancel this out so i just took my time took my time and i was close i was close i only needed a couple more items uh, and, um, I mean, I could have got those any day, uh, just, it was a matter of going to get them. Um, and my, uh, daughter came home from school. She was like seven years old. She comes home from school and she talks about this boy that sat next to her and his mom came and got him, uh, from school and she was dressed all, you know, she's dressed like a Muslim woman, you know? And when she started to, because, you know, my child, children don't have prejudice. Children don't see differences in people like, like adults do. Yes. And when she was describing this woman, I went off. I just exploded. She's describing a Muslim woman. A Muslim woman. Yeah. And the famous saying that's usually always said by a bigot is that I don't want my family around those people. Yeah. And so my, my daughter looked at me like I was totally just uh -huh. out of my mind. And somehow, some way, for whatever reason, a light bulb came on and says, my hatred's mine, but now I'm pushing it on her. That's wrong. Do, do you see this where people are becoming victims of this hate machine that is, per, this, this hate that's perpetuated because now the war machine, you got to go and create this, this, this perception like they are the other, so now it's easier to kill the other because naturally we're i mean we're all human beings nobody it's just in our innate nature we we don't i don't think people just uh they they're not born racist they're not born with this hate that this hate is uh like nelson Mandela. he said people aren't born hating mm -hmm. you know uh they're taught this you got to teach them how to love 
So now, you know, to go where you, where you see a lot of wars happening, and now this this uh, false persona, this uh, this is misinformation is created, and now the average person through the media and through the hate provocateurs, corrupt politicians, and you name it, the list goes on, pushing out all of this, and now the average layman like you is just watching Fox News, and now he's just getting pro, he becomes a victim to this hate. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, you, absolutely. If I, we put those pieces together, it's, assume, uh, uh, it's safe to assume this is what you, you fell victim to that? We call, it, we call it the echo chamber. What is that called? The echo chamber, or echo box. It's where, when it comes to, especially media, you only associate yourself with stuff that is like-minded to the way you already feel. Yeah. So it just reinforces it. Yeah. And but why, why does, but most people, when you ask most people, they'll be like, you can't believe the media, like even sure. Americans, but why with this, they believe the media? Mm -hmm. um, it's like you, so, selective ignorance. Uh, well, I, you get my point? Yeah, yeah. I, and, 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 you know, I'll be the first one to say that, you, you know, Americans by nature are, are, are in, is a generalized statement, but they're not the go getters that uh -huh. they once used to be. Yeah. Uh, they're the ones that sit back and let it hit, let them come to them, and and that's the way they they filter their news and their beliefs is, you know, majority rules, kind of thing. Yeah, it's the social norm. We're yeah. going to go with the social norm. We're not going to detour from that at all. Yeah, and it's easier that way. So the herd mentality, just following what everybody. Absolutely. And and and, and you can link this back also because you you talk about drinking uh, how much vodka a day? You're half gallon every two days. Half gallon every two days. So you're already bitter. You're already ang angry. And now you got to blame somebody. Oh, yeah. 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 Why not and blame the the Muslims? Yeah. And, 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 and as if that's going to make the economy better, if that's <laughs> going to make everything just all your problems go away, the oh, pain yeah. in your heart. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and be, because, it, you know, it, it you look at things and things that bother you and things that hurt you and things that that hold you down. OK that you once you overcome those uh the pain that you felt is still there yes it's still there it's still there until you're willing to give up yourself you have to give up yourself and go to something greater which is the end result of what happened mm -hmm. i ended up becoming a muslim oh so oh wow this is like you know we got they got to make a we need some ho hollywood producers out there to, to make us get we got the script ready and this needs to be a, they're, a movie. they're actually in in, in the process talk about that this I don't needs know to be made this is like uh this is a, a direct um uh film to to challenge this american sniper i mean this is the american hero right here man yeah. who i'm sitting next to right that actually you know uh I'm chose chose, chose love over hate and this is the yeah. story that everyone needs to hear that's what we got our brother here on the Dean show. So you're making plans to kill innocent human beings mm -hmm. and Muslims are simply those in houses of worship that you were about to attack. And now I always like to define words because now, you know, in these words, people think Muslim. I say, hold on, by, are you, they ask me, are you Muslim? I say, uh, by Muslim, do you mean someone who has chosen freely to submit his will to the creator of the heavens and earth and be the best morally upright person i'm a muslim but if you associated me with some crazy stuff in your mind you could take that and have that and keep it all right and right. change so you were going to kill those types of people yeah so what happens then well uh, after i had the, the 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 blow up in front of my daughter and she she created that light bulb in my brain i decided without telling anybody i'm going to go visit these people mm. i'm going to give them a chance to prove me wrong and to prove my plan as invalid she softened your heart opened it i won't say it. softened it opened it yeah. opened it so i did went there on the juma you know i knew fridays was was prayer that was when i was planning on doing it's like the prayer. congregational prayer yeah, yeah 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 i i knew friday was when most people would be there uh and so i went and i went early and i walked into the to the islamic center and there was a african-american gentleman who used to play pro basketball back in the 70s so it took him like three minutes to actually stand up straight mm -hmm. uh and he he looked at me he was in his shoe room taking off his shoes and and he looked at me and he smiled and i looked at him and he knew i was kind of out of place because i looked confused yeah and he said can i help you and i said yeah i want you to teach me about islam he said he smiled and kind of chuckled a little bit he says well how much time you got 
I said, well, I looked at my watch. I said, I got a couple hours, <laughs> which still makes me laugh because I think, you know, you, you can't teach anybody anything in two hours, but yeah. especially a, 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 a theology, right? Yes. And, and Islam is just too complicated to, to teach in two hours. But he, he, he smiled and he says, we'll give a shot. So uh, I stayed for Juma. And even still, I, I, I thought, well, you know, the, 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 the hutbah or the, the, the sermon, the message that was being presented that day was a good one. Oh, it was good. I told myself they were just saying that because I was there. Yeah. You know. And they, at, they were doing like, the takia. You ta heard? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so you, you know, it was just. They were just doing that because I was there, right? Mm. Just, you know, the, they want to portray this peacefulness yeah. and all and if this. And for, for people that I know, because many of the Islamophobes, they use this, this they throw out this word, you, you know what I mean, yeah. taqiyya, like they're lying. You're eventually going to find out the lie and it's going to anger you even more. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. obviously there was no lie. You, you liked what you're hearing and what happened then? Yeah, and, and so, so then I, I get introduced to another gentleman, another Muslim brother, and uh, he takes me in the library. There was a couch there at the time, and we, we sat down, we started talking. He said, you ever read the Quran? And uh, said, nope, nope, never, never have, man. He went over to the bookshelf, got a copy, handed it to me. He said, I want you to read this. And when you get questions in your mind, come back and see us, man. Ask us. And so I did. Now, to, 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 to jump back just a little bit, I didn't tell anybody my intentions. I went there presenting myself as somebody who wanted to learn a little bit more about a religion that few people knew about mm -hmm. outside of Muslims themselves. So they didn't know I was this mad bomber. <laughs> they didn't know that. And uh, they had no clue about no your plans. No clue. Nobody, yeah. nobody knew about my plans. Anybody that knew me knew that I did not like Muslims. They what, knew I hated uh, Muslims. No, an FBI, you know, CIA. We're no, getting to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so um, what happened was, as I went home, I read the Quran. And my wife started to freak out a little bit <laughs> because she knows I hate Muslims. Yeah. I'm reading the Quran. What is going on, right? She's getting really worried because she's thinking, after I told her I went to the Islamic Center, that I was going to do something. Did some of this rub off on her? Was she starting to hate? No, no, no. no. She was pretty much, you know, people are people. Yeah. They're good and there's bad. Yeah. That's just the way she le led her life. Yeah. Um, and so I read it and I come up with questions. I read passages like the, the famous kill them, kill them, kill all the non-believers, Right. And, and stuff like that. Things and, they throw out. Yeah. Yeah. Chapter nine, and, nine, yeah. And I was like, bam, I want to see what they got to say about this. So then they explained it. And it was a, a, an historical passage that was presented to explain what was going on at that time. Yeah. The non-believers were not the Christians. They were not the Jews. They were the pagans. So they had nothing to do and with it. you being anybody. a man of combat, you can understand those are combative verses for combat in a yes. historical context. Yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes you got to feel that way. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. Uh, okay, all right. I like that. That makes sense. That makes sense. And then I, and then I stumbled upon uh, uh, other verses that, that, that stuck out. And, and the two most to this day that filled me with love and really, really opened my heart was to take one human life is like killing all of humanity. But to save a human life is like saving all of humanity. Chapter 5, verse 32, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. There's and nothing like that out there. That nothing. I mean, you're saving all of humanity by saving one life. Right, right? That's right. how great it is in the sight of God Almighty. And Almighty. I was like, wait a minute. What book are these insurgents and these and these Al Qaeda members and these ISIS members? What book are they reading? Because the way they're acting is totally against everything I'm reading right here in the book. Mm -hmm. This is it. If 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 you don't believe, as a Muslim for whatever reason you don't believe in anything else, you have to believe in the Quran. What book are they reading? You know, uh, because of the, their, their actions. So that. As a semi-intelligent person, I, I had to, I, I, I had to uh, uh, rationalize. They do not speak for Islam. That's not Islam. And in the meantime, these people are so nice to me. 
welcoming, inviting me to their homes for dinners, not knowing that I have plans to blow up this building with them in it. Mm -hmm. Eight weeks later, from the first day I stepped foot in that, in that Islamic center, I took my Shahada. So now eight weeks from when you made the human connection, you actually stepped in brave enough, you came into mosque, teach me about Islam. Eight weeks lo later, now you're doing what Jesus did, what Moses did, what the last and final message Prophet Muhammad did, what the best of humanity did, you submitted your will to God. You, you took the Shahada. You mm -hmm. declared there's nothing worthy of worship except the one God, and Muhammad is his message. That's simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'll never forget because, you, you, you know, there's always this thing that, that Muslims are telling you, if, if you're not a Muslim, we're, we're going to kill you and stuff like that. It's you know, all crazy, that craziness, man. right? And when I went there and told them, I said, I want to take Shahada. Yeah. And they were like, whoa, hold on. <laughs> are you sure about this, man? It's not been that long, you know? And and I, I, I says, no, it, it, it's what I need to do. Yeah. I, I, I don't, it, it's not a want, it's a need. Yeah. I, I have to do this because I have to start living my life by a different set of ideas. Mm -hmm. And I, I like the doctrine that Islam teaches, mm -hmm. that, that Islam presents to humanity. It's important. And I want to be a part of that. And so I did. I did. Um, six months after that, I told them who I really was and what I was really planning to do. Uh, they were blown away, totally just wow. And I took that story and I started telling other people, telling other people. And as I'm telling people, I'm at home one day and I get a knock on the door. Six months, half a year later now. Yeah, yeah. I get a knock on the door. Let me guess who. It, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, uh, the Phoebe, as one of the brothers calls it, the Phoebe, <laughs> the FBI. Where are you guys? Oh, man. And because somebody had you know called them yeah they were concerned you know um and, and especially now because i'm a muslim well they didn't know that as as this as this nationalist that i was yeah that i was going to do this as a muslim i'm totally against that so you know everything had been gone yeah. you know so there really wasn't even a case because they they had no evidence yeah. i had already disposed of things the way they should have been disposed of and and it, there was nothing left that was it because it didn't need i didn't need it yeah. I, you know and so that that was open for a while that's when my wife found out what i had planned she didn't even know nobody knew and when the fbi and the bomb dog came to the house she was floored she didn't talk to me for a couple of days yeah <laughs> you know so um she knows you're muslim now she, oh yeah, yeah 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 i i i remember i came home after i took shahada mm -hmm. again i didn't tell her which is something I'm still trying to work through in the military because I, I was I, I belong to groups of people that you just didn't tell anybody anything. You, you, you don't do that. Yeah. So I, I, I'm still working through that, not telling my wife things, <laughs> which, as you know, can be pretty devastating mm -hmm. in, in, in a marriage. <laughs> so, uh, um, you know, I told her, I said, hey, I took Shahada. She goes, did what? <laughs> She didn't know what it was. Yeah. And I, says, I said, I'm a Muslim. And she goes, what? It was so funny. She says, well, I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm not wearing a bunch of scarves on my head or anything like that. I'm not covering up. And I said, well, I said, you're not a Muslim. I wouldn't even expect you to. Mm -hmm. like, you know. And she says, and another thing, if you want four wives, I'm not going to be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and that kind of made me laugh. And I was like, you know, and to myself, I kept this in. I was like, you know, I, I don't know if I really want the one now. <laughs> if four, I, I, I just think that's, that's masochistic. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so, and uh, it was uh, four years later, she became a Muslim. So now your wife also, she accepted Islam. Islam, yes. Yeah. She, uh, she obviously, she did her homework. She, mm -hmm. she researched. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're just asking people to do. Do what you did, real simple. Make the human connection. You know, go experience things for yourself. Go to an open house. You know, read the Quran and look. I mean, man, this is just amazing. You were courageous enough. I mean, this true bred American. You know, and you thought that you were taking it to another level by going to. You know, have you ever met one of these people that heard your story and said, "Man, I was about to do the same thing," until I heard you? Uh, not necessarily in those words. Uh, when when the video came out. Uh, out of curiosity, I read the comments 
uh, and well, I, I read a lot of them. I didn't read all of them. There was a lot of comments. And uh, some, uh, most of them were good. It was a nine to one ratio, I was told, good to bad, mm-hmm. uh, which is pretty, pretty crazy, uh, over a million views. So nine to one ratio, good to bad. One of the comments stood out to me. And I, I won't say exactly what he said. He had a very colorful tongue to him. But basically he said, if, if a bad dude like you can change the way he thinks, I guess I can too. Uh, American as can be, um, serving his country, and look at exactly what you said. Look, they might be hating, but now you are at the top of the hate. Where are you going to go more above this, right? And there was nothing there. Well, and and that's and you know my soldiers, if they if they were still around or if they were here, they they tell you the same thing. They they thought I was they thought I was something else because and it, it made them proud to be. For me to be their sergeant, their platoon sergeant, their team leader, their squad leader, it made him sarge, yeah, sergeant, yeah, and so it made him proud because fire broke out, we'd start getting shot at. I just stood there and handed out commands. I didn't run for cover and uh, like one of my soldiers curl up and suck his thumb. It actually happened, (laughs) you know, Uh, and uh, I didn't do that because. I wasn't done, and I, I didn't. I, I had this sense of immortality to me. I wasn't done, and I, I still use that today. You know, I I, I I tell people that that I'm not going anywhere, not until I'm done, and that's what I say. Not until I'm done, and when I'm done, he'll decide, and then he'll take me. Nobody else has that power. It's amazing how the Creator of the heavens and earth, Allah, how He's able to change hearts and then use that person like yourself and as an amazing example for others to really reflect and, and think over. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell us, you're, you're in the um, supermarket oh, yeah. and you see a couple women. They're just wearing what Jesus' mother would have been wearing, you know, the hijab, imitating uh, uh, Mary, mm-hmm. uh, who there's a whole chapter named after her yeah, in the Quran. Yes. You see these women and you're ready to snap a neck? I actually broke down and cried. I actually broke down and cried. It, it wasn't in a supermarket. It was in a uh, DSW shoe store, mm. uh, big shoe store. And uh, went there because I have a wife, and that's what wives do. Yeah. <laughs> they go buy shoes. And uh, so I was there with her, and, and there was these two uh, uh, Muslim ladies wearing black burqas. Really stood out. And so I told them, you know, I, I, I sat down in a chair and I started crying and my wife got all concerned. She goes, what's wrong? Because I was still having some emotional issues with being back and being away from the wars, you know. And I just started crying and I says, well, I, I won't say what I actually said, but, it, you know, it's those two women over there. I, I'm trying to drum up the courage and the intestinal fortitude to go over there and break both their necks. Man. Because they're in my store and they shouldn't even be in my country. And, it, you know, it, it it's shamefully that I, I, I tell these stories and, it, it, you know, I'm not, I'm not proud of any of this, uh, but I tell it because it needs to be told and people Mm -hmm. need to understand, you know, like I've said, you know, Allah had a plan for me. I think he could have come through a little bit sooner, but that's not up to me. That's up to him, you know, but I had to be all the way over here to the right, be this hardcore person that had this hatred in his heart that didn't even flinch an eye at taking a life. To be this person over here, I had to experience that because otherwise, how can I talk about it? I lived it. I was it, you know, uh, it, and, and since then I, I've, I, I've tried to reach people and people don't have to like me. I, I tell people many times, you know, I'm not looking for more friends. I, friends take time. I don't have time. I got a message and I got to deliver that message. And this is what I planned for me. So I ended up uh, resigning from my job 
uh, my nine to five. I was working with homeless veterans. Very admirable job, you know, uh, very rewarding. And I, I, I think, uh, you know, a lot takes took great pleasure on me doing that job. But it, I had to make a choice and that choice was made for me. That, that's the whole thing. It was made for me when I was at the JFK library speaking. And I stayed around a little bit afterwards. I was out walking around the library and a guy came up to me and he goes, I just wanted to tell you thanks. I says, okay, for, for what? He goes, you saved my life. And I was like, dude, how did I save your life? He said, well, long story short, my wife left. She took the kids. She's with another man right now. Tonight, I was going to commit suicide. I listened to you talk, and it made me realize we all have a purpose. We all have a purpose. I just need to find out what mine is. And that's what I'm going to commit my energy to now, is finding what my purpose is. At that point, I knew what I had to do. I had to quit. And so I went back and I told them, told them what happened, exactly what happened. And they were like, yep, this is what you need to do. Uh, so here I am. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. A couple more, uh, couple more things I just wanted to ask you. You, me you mentioned it was very interesting that you, uh, you, you spent some time in Bosnia, mm -hmm. this is where one of the um, the greatest genocide happened after World War II, mm -hmm. and there was many uh, war criminals there. Karadzic, was it? Milosevic. Milosevic. Codename Elvis. Codename Elvis. Because of his hair, they called him codename. Yeah, his codename was Elvis because of his hairdo. So you were you were tell us about that. Um, April fifteenth, two thousand four, we went on a raid to 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 Pale, S Serbia, yeah. and uh, to grabbing uh and bringing back Milosevic yeah Milosevic yeah to grab him and uh bring him back for trial we was gonna send him to the Hague and uh for for trial for war crimes uh got the intel that he was going to be here meeting with this priest and the priest's son and uh like most intel it was wrong and he wasn't there he had just left um but the priest was there and the priest's son was there uh, we burst through the door, did what we had to do. Uh, the priest and his son came at us with weapons, and we we eliminated the target. Um, and I used to jokingly just say, "Well, that's that's my pure uh, that that's my speed ticket to the to, to the fire." I just shot a priest. <laughs> um, but so they came shooting at you with, uh, with they, they actually didn't get a shot off yeah. they just came at us with weapons they came at you with yeah. weapons yeah so you're defending yourself yeah right? yeah um you're Ameri now you're Ameri this is you're in the military american military mm -hmm. right? yeah mm -hmm. th th so i i like to bring this up to to the our um uh, christian friends who are watching out there that in this part of the world where my uh, roots come from bosnia we were the original cr christians that accepted islam mm -hmm. unitarian christians who believed they were called the bogomils the, those close to god that's what they were nicknamed uh, they believed in jesus as a mighty messenger like abraham moses uh, they worship like Jesus did. They they prostrate like we do, put mm -hmm. their heads on the ground. They didn't go into the churches. They were you know uh, disconnected from it. They were uh, considered heretics. But most people today would be considered heretics because most people they don't you know they don't fall in line with Trinity, God being three and one. They believe and there's one God to worship Him alone. Right. And that's what these Bosnians believed. And when Islam came, like when it came to you and so many um, millions and millions of people now who are accepting Islam. Uh, that pure monotheism of only worshiping the creator and not the creation, those Bosnians accepted it. And this is how you have it in the heart of Europe till today. You actually visited that country also. Mm -hmm. And now and, and now you're also someone who who uh, went into a mosque, you've connected, and you turned this hate into love. Uh, but some people now, they're watching, uh, hearing this beautiful story. What would you say in conclusion to a person who's out there and he might be right now plotting mm -hmm. and planning and he's thinking of doing what you were doing mm -hmm. and taking it to that what you would say uh, being he thinks he's being more American now and he's about to do something like that you were planning on doing but he's tuning in what would you tell him first of all America American 
It's not a geographical location. This is what a lot of us misunderstand. It's a philosophy. I got this idea when I saw a little girl crying in Syria. She was more of an American at that point in her life than most Americans that have lived there their whole entire life. Born here, raised here. It was simply because of her desires. And we all had desires, each and every one of us. And we try to accomplish those desires. Now, some of these desires might be hate-filled, like mine was. And my plans might take us to, uh, uh, or take some of us to other levels, to where we're actually going to uh, create these atrocities to other human beings. Other human beings. That's the word you use. You don't use the word Christian. You don't use the word Muslim, Jewish, Hindu, human beings. Allah made human beings. That's it. It's up to us to understand and through positive action, propel human beings to a different level. And I've told many people that these dreams that we have, dreams are great. Dreams are great. Martin Luther King Jr. had a speech and he talked about his dream. Beautiful, beautiful, articulate words. I ask you, I plead to you, all the people, think about these dreams you have. Are they positive? Are they negative? What is the outcome? How does it affect human beings? And when you get to the point to where you can say this is a positive this is going to help human beings to go forward in our society, in our world. Then quit calling it a plan or quit calling it a dream. Call it a plan. Thank you so much. Thank you'll be, you. you'll be on your way. Uh, you're in Indiana, right? Yeah. Did you ever see that big sign? You come in and it says on one side, it says, uh, hell is real. Jesus is real. You didn't see that sign? I, I didn't yeah. see it coming in, uh, but there was all kinds of, you know. And I, yeah. just, you know, that's amazing now because many people don't know that now. How is your relationship, final question, with Jesus now? If you say, man, he's left Jesus. Uh, I, well, actually, it's better because being a nationalist, that was my religion. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't pray to any, anything because I was the one. I was the one. I even... Oh, I remember in Somalia, I even used the words when I was when I was uh, I grabbed a hold of a, a of a lady that was that was struggling with us, and I grabbed a hold of her and just gave her that look, and I grabbed her by her shirt, and I says, "Ana Allah." What'd you say? Ana Allah. I am God. Wow. You got uh, to that point of arrogance, yeah. huh? Oh yeah, yeah. I was. I mean, and 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 being at that level, I was at in the military. It. it, it that's really it's really less arrogance than it is survivability wow it's how you survive man mm -hmm. uh because you got to believe that you know you're the one mm -hmm. you, you know uh, otherwise you're not gonna that's a, that's what gave me gave me the 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 courage to when bullets are flying i'm standing up yeah because i'm not gonna get hit yeah i'm not done wow you know? if people want to reach out to, to hook up with you is uh you know, to invite you to a, to a university, a campus, someone uh, to a church, wherever the case, to hear this story live, you know, where, where can they? they uh, um, I, I um, well, I'm still working on social media. Yeah. Uh, got gotten a few, uh, few, few tips from your assistant. Yeah. And so he's helped me out a little bit. I'm kind of uh, tech in depth right yeah. now. So, uh, but uh, I, I, uh, I have a manager, uh, Smarty Pants Productions. Yeah. Uh, they they were the ones as Secret Life of Muslims. Uh, his name is Josh Seftel. Smarty Pants. They're in Brooklyn. Um, he uh, he um, he's Jewish, and he's the one who put this Secret Life of Muslims together. Yeah. Second season. That now. was the video, the one that went viral. That the one that went to CBS Sunday Morning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And because uh, he you see it's a. It, it's an internet. Sh it's like yours. It's, yeah. it's an internet show. Yeah. Okay. But he took my episode and gave it to a friend of his who happens to be the president of CBS and says, you need to watch this. Yeah. She put it on that Sunday morning program, the CBS Sunday morning. Uh, and uh, we were actually worried if it was going to air or not because 
uh, the Mueller report just came out. We didn't know if he's going to get bumped because of the Mueller report, yeah. you know, because, I mean, you know, the Mueller report or human interest, uh, you know. Yeah. So, But, no, they, they, they aired it, and uh, it just it blew up after that. Yeah. Um, my, my, even my parents, um, when I became a Muslim, shortly after I became a Muslim, actually it was when I, because I became president of that Islamic center. Uh, Not... Yeah, Man, we're gonna have to have you back now. We we <laughs> got we got things. Just uh, the story keeps evolving. You actually became president of the Islamic. Three Center. years after I became a Muslim, yeah, wow. Uh, I became president. I'm no longer president. Um, I, uh, um, I I I I, I uh, election came up, and I didn't run for my for another term because I was finishing my last semester in college. I just really didn't have the time. Too busy. Yeah. yeah, and and I didn't want to short change. The center at all. I didn't want to shortchange the community, uh, so uh, I basically s stepped aside. Yeah. And uh, the person I nominated was the one who got elected, a female, and it's the first female in that community. And I'll never forget. It was like a drop the mic moment <laughs> after Juma. You know, I got up to give announcements, and uh, I, I says, and uh, I just wanted to let all of you know that uh, the election's coming up soon. And I'm nominating somebody. I'm nominating somebody because of who they are and what they, what they do in the community, inside the Muslim community and outside. Because she was very involved in all of it. It has been for years. And I says, I want to uh, nominate Bibi Barami. And it, that was basically a drop the mic moment because the population there and in, in 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 our community is mostly Afghan Pakistan. There's a lot of culturalism mm -hmm. that I did I did a lot to to try to get away from because culturalism is not religion. It's not Islam, and it, it it's 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 taken a lot away from Islam, mm -hmm. and it's given it a bad given it a black eye in a way, you yeah. know. Uh, especially the treatment towards women and the, 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 the way we, you know, look towards the women. The women are precious gifts from Allah, man. Yeah, people, con people confuse uh, what people do culturally and they mix that up with uh, Islam. Right, right. Differentiate the two, yeah. So, you know, I, I, I made changes. You know, I, I, I believed in the separation. I believed in the separation of men and women. I did not believe in segregation where if we had a community events, they'd put up a... a, a a uh, divider in the room, women on one side, men on the other side. It's bogus. That's wrong. Uh, but I understood that there are women that if they, it, it, because of their cultural background, they don't feel comfortable sitting out there with everybody else. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, the women still had their own side, but we're all still in the same big room, you know, which is fine. Uh, but the ones who didn't feel comfortable coming out there without the dividers, they could sit back and they there had a room right off of the the main room mm -hmm. um and so they had the choice um there was a, a, a an instance before i became president that i went to the committee because what they were doing was they were having too many men and it was filling up the 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 prayer room f for juma so on juma what they were doing was they 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 took the women's section and converted it to the men's section also, like a like an overflow, and then put the women in the library, and I stood up against that. Their whole their whole thought was because of that famous hadith that has been totally flip flopped into meaning something that it doesn't, and that's the one where where the lady came to the prophet peace be upon him and, and said and said that uh, you know my husband's jealous, he doesn't even like me praying. Da, 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 you know, because he, he, he knows I'm talking to a man and, you know, all this, that, that and the other. I, I, don't, I don't know the actual numbers or even which, which, book, on, which, which book it is, but um, it's, it, it's a famous one. So the prophet, peace be upon him, in all his wisdom said, it's okay. Go to the closet and pray. You don't have to come to the masjid because it, it creates conflict in your home. He told her that. So now somehow, thousand plus years later, these men think that women don't need to be in the masjid. They really just don't have to be there. And so I explained this hadith, I broke it down and explained it. That's not what the prophet was saying. 
prophet was not saying that. He was saying this woman, this woman, because of her situation, didn't have to come to the masjid. Our sisters need to be in the masjid more, I feel, than our brothers do because they're the ones raising our kids. We want them to have that, that connection. We want them to have that, that, that philosophy embedded in them, right, wrong, indifferent. And we want them to be able to, 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 to have that uh, portrayed in the children. Because the men, the men aren't gonna do that it, because of the, the, the family structure. It just doesn't work that yeah. way. And so they said, yeah. Yeah, you're right. And when I uh, nominated uh, this female for, for president, you know, they came to me afterwards. As, as president, every Juma, I would always go to the library. I was open to having questions. You know, people want to ask me something. People want to voice their concerns to me as individually. I, I'm, I'll be in the library. I stayed there for hours at a time. And a um, <laughs> bunch of the, the older brothers, especially the older ones. They come to me and they 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 uh they said they said uh don't you think that's a little bit progressive nominating a female to be president? I said, "Brother, why is it I'm always explaining your guys' history to me or to you?" I said, "It's not progressive at all. Matter of fact, it's regressive." They said, "How?" I said, "Brother, who was the first Muslim?" Khadijah who founded the very first university and library, a Muslim woman. Mm -hmm. Why? Because men were off bickering with each other and fighting wars. The women did all of this. They built the society as much, if not more, than the Muslim men did. We have to give them their due and show them that respect. So, and they said, yeah, he's right. <laughs> Again, <laughs> man, thank you very, very oh, much man, for you know this is a very uh, inspirational story, you know to see where you came from, what you were planning on doing, and and to have you here with us, you know sharing this. It's a message of hope. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's beyond positive. It's something that uh, if if people really who have that hate in their hearts, they really just listen to this with a sincere, open heart. You know, it can change so many hearts and minds, and 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 that's a, a change for their better. And humanity's uh, better because we got just too much hate in the world right now, and because of that hate, leading to violence. And we've seen, like, just this year alone, over 500, you know, Muslims attacked, and in, in just in, in America, and right. and we need more of this. And I want to commend you, you know, may God Almighty Allah continue to bless you and keep you firm Thank on you. the Dean. And inshallah, we can meet up again. Inshallah, so, inshallah, it'd be great. Inshallah. Yes. Yes. And thank you guys for tuning in. And as I said, if you ask me or if you ask our brother, uh, are you Muslim now? Uh, you turned into a, what, a, a terrorist? No, I've submitted my will. I've taken that free choice that I have to worship a stick, a stone, money, materialism, a human being. No, no, no. The sun, the moon. No, no, no. I just want to worship the one who created me, and I want to be an upright human being. I want to help humanity. I want to make the world a better place. And if I happen to be American, which I am, I'm going to do it as a Muslim American, like the Muslim American hero Muhammad Ali. But the best of mankind that they were following and our brother is now are the prophets that God Almighty sent out of his love to guide humanity, just like Jesus, Abraham, Moses, and Muhammad, peace and blessed be upon him, was just the last. They all came with that same message. Worship the creator, not the creation. Be morally upright and take it to another whole level. Of being the best human that you can be. We'll see you next time. Tune in here to the Dean Show every week. Subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum.